Okay, this is the second in my uh, uh, set of videos about the finite element method using uh, spring elements, simple one-dimensional one spring elements. Uh, and we're working a problem out here where we have placed this uh, um, spring element under uh, compression. We know the nodal displacements and we're so simply solving for the nodal forces. So, um, uh, if we work this equation out, it's just a simple multiplication qu equation. Uh, we're going to get the nodal forces, F1 and F2. And then uh, I multiply the first row uh, times this vector here. So I'm going to wind up with, a, I have a 2 by 2, this is a 2 by 2, times a 2 by 1. So I'll wind up with a 2 by 1, which is just a, a vector with a, uh, two, two rows in it. All right, so 1,000 times um, uh, uh, 0.2 is 200 uh, minus 100. Uh, that will be the top element, and then the bottom element will be minus 200 uh, plus 100, uh, or this is 100, and this is minus 100. So as I said, and as you can see in the picture here, uh, F1 is positive because it's pointing to the right. And here's F1 right here. It's the top element. Uh, F2 is negative because it's pointing to the left. And uh, our, our formulation automatically took care of that. OK, uh, let's do another example that's uh, simple too. A little bit different, but also simple. Let's uh, have a spring element, like so. Here's our spring element. And uh, we're actually going to fix x2. So x2 is going to be uh, x2 equals 0. Oh, I've done that again. Sorry about that. So we're, we have our spring element, and we fix x2. And then we're going to put a... Uh, a known force on x1. So uh, the previous problem, we did, we knew what the two uh, the nodal deflections were, and in this case, um, we are going to have a specified force applied to the spring, and of course one all move. Okay, uh, here's our k again. Now, uh, so this is a different type of problem. It's a simple problem, but. And you could solve this yourself just using what you've learned in physics. But um, uh, we are going to be given that F1 is equal to 100 newtons. Uh, we'll keep the same spring. So this is 1,000 uh, newtons per meter. Okay. Uh, X1 is unknown. Uh, and then the force at uh, x2 is unknown also. Uh, we know x, and this is typical, uh, you'll either know the nodal force or you'll know the nodal displacement. Uh, so on this end, we know the nodal force, F1, and on this end, it's unknown. On the left-hand end, the first node, we don't know the displacement. Uh, on the second node, um, we don't know the reaction force, F2. So uh, let's put this into our uh, matrix formulation. So we're going to have a 100 here. We really ought to keep track of our units, and we don't know what F2 is. And then we have our element stiffness matrix, like before. And then over on the right, we're going to have uh, x1, which is unknown, and then x2, or, yeah, x2 is 0. Okay, so we know one force, and w there's one unknown force. We know one uh, displacement, and then we have an unknown displacement also. So um, uh, what we can do is we can uh, work this out. Uh, what we see, if we get our first equation, we have 100, and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, units in here. This is newtons, and then we have a thousand 
in the newtons per meter times x1. So we can solve for x1. x1 is going to be uh, 100 newtons divided by 1,000 newtons per meter. The meter comes back up on top. The newtons go away. And so this is going to be 0 0.1 uh, meters. Okay? Uh, and since we now know x1, we can solve for f2. So f2 is going to be, uh, we use a second equation, minus 1,000 newton per meter uh, times x1, which is 0 0.1 meters. Uh, that's all we need because uh, in the second equation, the second element in this vector is 0. And 1,000 times 0 is going to be 0, so that's it. So we can just solve this now. The, uh, ma the uh, meters uh, cancel out, and uh, we have negative uh, 1,000 times 0.1, so F2 is going to be minus 100 newtons. Okay? Now, this makes sense if you go back and look at the original problem. Um, F1 is 100 newtons, and this is a static problem. The, the, uh, nothing's accelerating. Everything's sitting still. So F2 has to be equal to, uh, uh, in magnitude, F1, but opposite in direction. And our finite element method, uh, with our simple local stiffness matrix, took care of all this. Uh, and then uh, we were able to find the unknown nodal displacement also. Uh, using this method. We use the first equation for that. So this should give us some confidence that we, we know how to solve these problems and this should give us some confidence that uh, uh, the methodology that we're employing for um, our local stiffness matrix should uh, deliver good results. Okay, you can work all sorts of other problems uh, also. We could work a tensile problem. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Uh, so what this would mean is that if we go back, let's just use our formulation and not do a whole lot of extra work. So rather than pushing uh, on the spring, I'm going to pull on the spring. And what we want to see with the same force, what we want to see is whether it works the signs out correctly. Uh, so what should happen in this case, if we pull, then we should get an F2 that is uh, to the right, and that would be positive. And then we should get an X1 to the left, which would be negative. So let's see what happens if we, uh, if we formulate that uh, and, and whether this uh, falls out of the uh, uh, equation correctly. So I'm, just, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to uh, copy as much as I can of this. So I go to my formulation. And I put in negative 100 now. I still don't know F2. Equals. And then we still have the same old... When you change the direction of the applied forces, it does not change the uh, uh, element stiffness matrix, which is really a property of the, of the physical device, the spring itself. Uh, we have, again, a 0x2, because it's fixed to a, a wall or something. And then uh, x1 is something that we're going to be looking for. <clears throat> so if we multiply this out, uh, negative um, uh, 100, uh, well, let's just write it out, negative 100 is equal to 1,000 times x1. Okay, and actually I should use my units. So uh, this is newtons, and this is newtons per meter. So this means that x1 is going to be equal to, I divide through by 1,000, minus 100 uh, newtons divided by 1,000 newtons per meter. Oh, I'm down below where, I, where you can see again. Sorry, I need to keep better track of that. I hadn't used this device before, so it's... Uh, it's something new for me. So I just multiplied out the first equation, and now I'm, uh, um, that's what I did here, and now I'm solving for the unknown uh, uh, x1, the, the unknown displacement of node 1. And so what we're going to get here, our, our uh, newtons cancel out, and we will get minus 0 0.1 
meters. Okay, so like I said, uh, if we pull on the spring, uh, it's up here, instead of push on the spring, if we pull on the spr spring, then x1 is going to be negative, and it is. Okay, but uh, you know what I'm trying to show here is that the methodology itself delivered the correct line. And then uh, with the uh, nodal displacement, we can actually go back and solve for F2. So uh, F2, if we use a second equation, is equal to minus 1,000, and this will be newtons per meter, times uh, X1, which is uh, minus 0 0.1 meters. The meters cancel out. And we will get, since I have two negatives here, we will get 100 newtons. So uh, the methodology is working. Uh, now that we have tension, uh, in the second example, if we look at our original uh, picture, we pulled on the spring, spring. We got a negative nodal displacement, so going to the left. And we got a positive or a rightward uh, reaction force where the spring hooks into the wall. Okay, I'm going to stop there and start another example when we uh, go into video number three.